Good morning. This is Classic Car Talk with Hutch. We have all kinds of crazy things that we're going to be going over. You will want to stay tuned to this whole entire episode. We have a special guest that's going to be coming on with us. We also are going to be talking about Las Vegas. Las Vegas is going to be coming up here very, very soon. We have basically we're opening up on November 1st. We also are going to have there is SEMA. We have SEMA, Mecham, and then F1. So there's lots of crazy, exciting stuff that's going on there. Also, there is uh, there's a little bar that you might not know of. It's it's a new cocktail bar, and it is kind of an invite only. So um, there are a few things with that are, that are really interesting. It kind of goes along with Classic Car Addict because it is everything is kind of themed for the 30s and how Las Vegas really kind of was started and created. And, uh, you know, if you're not invited, maybe you just got to do a couple things, buy a car from us, and you might just get an invite. Also, we're going to be going over Cadillac, the Cadillac V. It is going into its 20 years, and they're, they're basically releasing the iconic black. It's only going to be available in a V model, and it's kind of like with the Panther, right? So there's this matte black. They're, they're basically kind of, you're, it seems like black was popular before. Now they're trying to bring it back and give it these kind of uh, limited edition production runs. GM's just like, again, I, we talked about this on the last episode. They're just kind of trying to figure out what to do. What they really need to do is make the Camaro all electric and have it just literally super fast. If they took the E-Crate, Right, if they took the E crate motor that they put in the Copo and just made that into the seventh gen Camaro, honestly, I think that they would they're kind of going towards the Corvette. And I think that if they stayed with the Corvette but released the Camaro in an electric version that was a two door in a seventh gen, and they'd be able to stay up with the Mustang. And if they were even pricing it at you know a hundred thousand, one hundred twenty thousand, comparably to the Mustang's three hundred thousand, I think that they're going to be a strong component in there. Plus, you have the Charger and the Challengers. All of these are going electric. They're doing their own things with that. So it would be definitely something to have, have Chevy. Come on, Chevy. Chevy. You guys you guys got to do something. You guys, you guys are making me look bad. All right. So we got also, we got 10 of the fastest in a car. So non-aspirated. So naturally aspirated cars. These naturally aspirated cars, non-supercharged, non-electric, non-turboed, fastest cars. And they kind of basically backdate generations, and they're some of the fastest. We also have the iconic crime cars. Obviously, there's going to be a few on here that you know about, and then there might be a few. We'll do a little quiz and test and see if you know. We also are bringing on our guest from Bad Apples Barber. He will be in our next segment, so you'll want to stay tuned for that, especially for some special discounts that you can only get here at Classic Car Talk with Hutch. So let's get right into um, the the 10 fastest naturally aspirated cars. So we're going to start off in 2012. So 2012, it was the Lexus LFA. If if you've seen it and you know it, the LFA, it was it was just it was an awesome iconic kind of car for Lexus. It's branding it in in motorsports. It was also just super fast. It was a V10, naturally aspirated. It would do, you know, 202 on its top speed. It just had really some some high rev points that made it high competition for that 2012 season. Getting into 2017. So 2017, we're going to be going into I'm sorry, well, let's let's break it. Let's go to 2022. So we'll go to last year. One, uh, you know, basically the R8 is going to be going away. Right now, 2022, the R8 performance, rear-wheel drive, it was top speed at 204 miles an hour, and, of course, you got, had to have the V10 in it. So it had the same engine platform as the Lamborghini Huracan, and, again, it was, it was in, in the motorsports market, it was definitely bringing in the speed, and it was high competition in there through all of – of, of motorsports the next one 2017 so 2017 is the dodge viper srt gts top speed of 206 miles an hour and again it was the v10 the v10 8.4 liter it was you know just its own it was a heavy car heavy car but its top speed was actually doing really really well we're going to get into 2006 
So going back, so 2006, it was the Porsche Carrera GT, 208 miles an hour. So they only made like 1,270 of these, you know, the, of the GTS. They only made about 1,270 of these, 208 miles an hour. And of course, your 2006, those production runs, they were just, they were just kind of awesome on their own. And uh, again, naturally aspirated, just an awesome car. Now let's get into 2011. So right, right previous to the 2012 that we were talking about um, on the, the Lexus. So 2011 was the Ferrari FF. So the Ferrari FF, 208 miles an hour. 208 miles an hour was its top speed. And, you know, if you know Ferraris, you just, you know how the Ferraris are. You know, the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, the, the Audis, the BMWs, the Mercedes, they each had their own kind of uh, just, just look to them. So it kind of goes on what your kind of design preference was that we get into that. And I think of all the ones that I've mentioned, you know, obviously we got Porsche, but uh, I think that my the look I think was the Lexus for me in into the point so far. But let's get into so so next um, it, we're going to get into basically really really now we're starting to get into uh, uh, Pagani right. So the Zonda F Club Sport. I mean now we're starting to get into millions of dollars where it's not just an affordable you know hundred two hundred thousand dollar car. Now we're talking about millions. So sometimes these cars. Even though they are the fastest in production, it takes it to another level. Yeah, they're awesome, but it's taken into another level that not everybody can afford. It gets into you know your one two percent that can afford this, but we have to put it on here because it was fast, 214 miles per hour in that. So that's uh, the Zonda F Club Sport. Now getting into the uh, the Aston Martin 177. So the 177 again, it's another just amazing, amazing. Uh, vehicle. It's just, it, it looks great. There was only 77 of these in production. So very limited production has a high resale value. And if you can get one, you are going to be spending some money. You're definitely going to be spending some money now, 2014. So the Lamborghini, um, the Veneno. So it basically was 221 miles per hour. So now we're getting in here, but you're also, you got to spend about four million dollars to be able to get into one of these again now we're getting into these ones that are just out of reach for the regular person we're also going to get into now we're talking about mercedes right so the mercedes the clk gtr super sport i mean i mean the the mercedes in its day through the motorsports competition it was just handling it 231 miles an hour it was putting away the Lamborghini, it was putting away the Audi, it was putting away the Lexus. It was it was just really on top for its point. Now let's go back even a couple more decades. So 1989, the McLaren F1. So the McLaren F1, if we if we look at it what it was, I remember playing Need for Speed and that was in about 1996 and that was a couple it was basically the generation after this but that was 240 miles an hour they only built 106 of the F1s for uh, basically between 89 and 98 so a total of 106 and again you know we're we're looking in a super super high end car so uh, with that it it's kind of just uh, going around you got to spend millions of dollars to be able to get in these top speed cars, where now you can get into a top speed car for about 120, 130,000. Next, we're gonna get into some of just the, the late model cars, late model cars that you can get that are actually priced well. So these are gonna be basically kind of the top 10 new sports cars for, you know, we're gonna say for resale value or what we think is resale value that you'll be able to buy some of these in their sport model, have a good production group of them where you'll have them readily available and it's not like a super, super low production amount. But in some of these, there are. So we're gonna to get to the first one, which is a weird one on here. So the 2024, uh, the MX-5. So the MX-5, it's basically a 50-50 weight distribution it's, 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 you know, it's a two liter, but uh, it's starting about 28,000. It looks like, uh, you know, modelly, you know, equipped the way that we'd like it. You're looking to probably spend about 39,000 uh, for a Mazda, which is, which is quite a bit, but comparably to some of the others, 
you know, it's 50-50 weight distribution. I think it's going to be pretty good. Next one, the, uh, the 2024 Camaro. So the 2024 Camaro, now its starting price is at 30900 Now, of course, to get into, I, I don't consider the, the, you know, the RS six-cylinder in a way of, you know, a high-performance car. So you're going to have to get into at least a 1SS to be able to get some actual good production from it. But still, you're looking at about $40,000, and you're able to get one that's going to be in its last production, whether you have the limited edition model. You know, you got to spend $90,000 to get into that. This is going to be something where you can get into, you know, $40,000, $45,000 and have a really, really good car, and it's in its last production of it. We're also going to be going into um, the next one on here. So the, the next one, it is, you know, I, the, the 2024 Nissan 400Z. So the 400Z is going to be starting price of about $40,990. Of course, the way that we'd equip it would be in your $50,000, $52,000 range. But uh, it, it's going to be coming out. It is going to have its own kind of flavor that from the 370Z. And, you know, it's going to be a 400-horsepower twin-turbo uh, you know, six cylinder. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of, uh, it's on the aluminum chassis of the GTRs still kind of that, that same, but, uh, at a, at a lot less price. So something that you could definitely, definitely get into. Now the next one, 2024 Toyota GR Supra. So it's going to be starting at about 45,000. Again, the way that we'd equip it would be about 53,000 to be able to have it with the production and performance that you really want from it. But um, it, it's, it, it's going to be one out there. I would dr rather drive an older Supra comparably, but these Supras are quick. They are fast. Um, it's basically, you know, it's the three liter twin turbo straight six. It's kind of the, uh, uh, the successor to the to the 2JZ, it's it's got it's got what it needs to, and it really comes out, and it's really kind of pushing. Now, well, let's go on to the next one. So the 2024 Chevrolet Corvette. So its starting price is 66,300. Of course, you can't get one for that. You can technically, but you're not going to really be able to get one. So uh, uh, well equipped is going to be roughly in about that $78,000 range for that one. And uh, we're not talking about Z06 or ZR1s or anything like that. And not, uh, you, you know, you want some equipment on there to really, really so you can enjoy the vehicle. Now, next one. So the 2023 right now, so we're getting through the last production of it. So a 2023 Mustang Shelby GT500, right? So starting point at 76,820. They pretty much come equipped almost with everything that you need, you can add some additional packages to them. But overall, it is really going to, it's an aggressive vehicle for, for what it is. It's going to be, you know, your ZL1 comparably to the GT500. There's, there is a lower amount of production of them made, and they are bringing good resale value even with a couple thousand miles on them. So, uh, it, you know, we get into that. Now, 2024 BMW G80 M4. So again, now we're we're getting closer into these higher end numbers, but starting price of seventy eight thousand one hundred dollars. So with that, you are you're getting an M four, which you know you'd have to equip this with a few other additional options. Get in there, you're going to be about eighty nine thousand dollars right there, ninety four thousand. If dealer markup, you know they're getting another ten thousand on these M fours. So. It, they're making a very limited production of them. You have to get on the list. It's kind of they aren't just letting anybody order one. So if you got a little bit of pull or you've bought a BMW before, you might be able to get one. It's taken about six months to be assembled and delivered. So the 2023, I'm sorry, 2024 BMW G80 M4. Um, and if you just, it's got the new S58 motor. So that new S58 motor uh, is really really uh, breaking ground. And some of these are selling with 10,000 miles for like 10,000 over what they were, what the MSRP is. So you got to pay. So they're, they're bringing the same amount with 10,000 miles as what you can buy one new. You just have to wait on the list and make sure that you get one. Hey, okay. now, now let's get into, we're trying to stay under a hundred thousand or right by a hundred thousand. So 
Uh, this next one is actually breaking over that 100,000 mark. So we're looking at the, the 2024 Porsche 911 Carrera. So this isn't getting into, you know, your GT twos, your GT threes. This is staying right in there. Just a, a regular Porsche Carrera 911. If you equipped it out, it goes up by like 30 to 40 to 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. When you start to add on some of these differences that you get, uh, when you put on, you know, some of these upgraded sports packages. So, you know, it's got the PDK dual clutch. It's, it, it's, it's really, if you have seen one or drove one, these are, they look good. The interior, they did a great design. It's got good technology. They finally updated the interior where it looks really good, and it looks like it's pretty comfortable in there. Now, staying with Porsche, 2024 718 Spider. So 103,000. Again, these are just right there at that, uh, at that kind of marking of $100,000. But they are some actually some pretty cool cars. And, you know, the... The 718 GT4, that's a, that is an awesome car, but you're going to be way over that 100,000 mark. Um, you know, so those are kind of the ones that, uh, that we've been looking at that are, have a good, good resale value with them. If you're to purchase one, drive it for a year, put 10,000 miles on it, and then resell it, you're able to gain or at least not lose too much money comparably with just driving and buying a, a, a new car. Now, the next thing that we're going to be getting into uh, coming up on our, our next episode is we're going to bring in and uh, bad apples. They're going to be coming in. We also going to be going over. We will get to the iconic cars of basically crime sprees, different things like that, that were involved with that. And we're going to be getting into some of the maybe less popular ones that you did not just see that was not broadcasted all over nationwide. And if you're into those kind of creepy crime cars, we might have one that you like. We definitely, definitely have got our eyes on one that will be possibly coming up here available. So definitely make sure that you listen, stay tuned. We're at Classic Car Addict LLC on Instagram, Classic Car Addicts on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all of our socials to stay up to date on all of our coupons, all the latest and greatest news in the classic car world.